What's up everybody, Zod 3.2 is out, and this gives me a wonderful chance to talk about one of my favorite libraries. Zod is an amazing lib for data validation in TypeScript. It's fantastic if you're calling APIs that you're not sure what they return, or if you're building APIs that you're not sure what data is going to be added to them, and it adds runtime validation to TypeScript in a really beautiful, minimal syntax. So here we go, this is the announcement post. This is Colin, who's written Zod, and who's building a lot of this stuff. Let's see what goodness we've got here. I've immediately seen that I've misspoke. It's not 3.2, it's 3.20, 3.20. I mean, Zod has been around for a while and I kind of love these libraries that just keep bumping up the minor version. It shows that not that much has changed. Okay, let's check out this new pipe method here. You can use it to chain multiple schemas into a validation pipeline. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. We have z.string, which we transform that string into its length and then we pipe it into a number and that's going to have min five. Let's test this out locally and let's see if it works like this. So I've given myself a little test file here where I'm using vtest and I'm using this inline snapshot to kind of like get the result that's being created here. So we can see that hello world here, if we have result there, then that's got length of 11. So we end up with 11 in our snapshot. If I add some spaces to this, then we're going to end up with 16 in our snapshot instead. So if we add pipe here and we pipe it to a Z dot number, then that makes sure that the thing we're returning from val dot length is a number. We can say some other stuff here. So we can say it has to be min length of 10. And we can then pipe it again if we want to. So now we're piping it to another Z dot number max 20. This is another way of achieving that. We could just stick this here if we wanted to, I guess. To check if this works, we can reduce our hello world so it's just hello itself. And that should throw an error in our test saying too small. I'm now trying to think to myself, how would I have achieved this without using pipe? I probably would have done it in a less idiomatic way, let's say by having this outside of the pipe itself and gone const number schema equals this and then actually do it inside here. So I would have gone number schema dot pass val dot length, which is less reusable, of course, because it means that all of the logic is contained within this one call here. But this is better because I can have this val dot length in here and then just pipe in my existing number schema. So this pipe seems to serve to make these kind of transformations where you want to pipe one schema to the result of other a bit more idiomatic. Okay, let's look at coerce now. Coerce seems to be something that you put before like a primitive type, like a string, and it coerces it to that thing. So you can have schema.pass tuner, and that of course doesn't need to coerce because it's already a string. Then schema.pass 12 coerces it to a string and same as true here. Let's play with this and see if we can push the limits a bit. Okay, so we've got our schema here, which is coercing from a string, and we have our coerce result, which is schema.pass123, and it's grabbing and turning that into a string there. Let's try it with an object. Yeah, we actually get object object. So it's probably calling to string on it. Then, okay, that's what it's doing. It's calling to string on whatever thing gets passed in there. With a number here, that's pretty cool. We grab a, like we can pass in something like this and it coerces it to a number if it can. That's really cool, actually. Like imagine if you're grabbing something out of local storage and you know that it's a number, but of course local storage is always gonna be a string. That's really nice. If we try to pass like true here as a string, which can't be coerced to a number, then it errors and it says expected number received NAN. Then how about with booleans? If we try and do this with true, we end up with actually the boolean true. Okay, I dig this actually, this is pretty sick. There's a lot of cases where especially you want to coerce strings to numbers and having this just idiomatic inside Zod is actually pretty nice. We have a new catch method, which we can add to any of these Zod things here. So if you have a string and it fails, then we get a fallback here. Okay, I can see something cool right away, which is we have this Z dot number here and we're trying to catch it. So provide a fallback, but that fallback has to be the same type as this number here. That makes sense. So we have our catchable schema here, Z dot number catch one, two, three. We've got our catch results, which is catchable schema dot pass. And then we're passing something that doesn't match Z dot number. And so we get the fallback instead. Again, there's like, 10 different things I can think about that I would want to use this for. But I am using Zod for some like really weird stuff actually. So like, I don't know if my use cases would be the same here, but frankly, just having like a nice natural fallback 
is pretty useful. Z.symbol. It says here a long missing hole in Zod's type system is finally filled. That's interesting because I very, very rarely use symbols and I'm kind of thinking to myself, what would I use this for? What would this be for? If Colin does see this video, then please do answer in the comments like, what is symbol for here? I can't quite think of what I would use this for. Z.string date time. Ah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, because Zod had Z.date before and this actually only accepts date objects. Whereas now it looks like it supports strings with the date time validation. So we can say z.string dot date time and I can pass in Will this work? No, that won't work because it doesn't have the time attached to it. So let me copy and paste this and then bam, now it's working. So you can customize this by adding precision. So wow, precision of three decimal points, then adding offsets to for time zones. That's really, really cool. That's actually a feature that I didn't realize Zod didn't have. And so having it just feels like a necessity. Those are great things to add in minor versions of libraries, like just things that should have been there from the beginning and are now added. Okay. And finally, we have z.number.finite. This restricts a number schema to finite values. Again, how is this not here already? It's fantastic that it's here. Brilliant. Wow. What a release. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, Zod just keeps getting better and better and better. Does this mean I'm more likely to use Zod? Not really, but it's great to see that it's still building and building and building. Colin is like such a great steward of the library and Zod is now being used in a bunch of different places like TRPC, in Blitz, and I think it will continue to see adoption. If you want to learn more about Zod, then you should check out my Zod course, which is on TotalTypeScript.com and it's totally free. So thank you, Colin, for Zod 3.20, not 3.2. And I'll see you guys next time.